First question is from Little Blue Arrow. Is there an ideal rest period between sets? I'm sure it's subjective, but are there body cues I should be listening to that can help me determine an appropriate rest? Yeah, I'm. You know, I picked this question because um, I think a lot of people get confused about rest periods, and they don't realize just how important yeah. it is, it, rest periods are to the effectiveness uh, of in a workout. Term, in terms of like the adaptation process well, in it's general. An, it's too. another progressive overload tool, and we know that that's one of the best ways to guarantee that you keep seeing progress. Yeah. It is, and not only that, but if you rest, if you change your rest periods, you change the effect of the workout completely. Yeah. I could take a straight set, structured uh, routine with compound barbell lifts, do all that stuff, and then eliminate rest periods, and it doesn't matter. It now has turned into yeah. uh, circuit training and cardio. So mm -hmm. rest periods are very important. If you're lifting weights, your goal probably is to speed up your metabolism, sculpt your body, get stronger, in which case you want to rest long enough to allow your body to replenish its ATP, which is a, a, the type of energy used for, for strength. So you want to, in other words, you want to rest long enough to where you could go back to your set and feel strong again. You don't want to just barely catch your breath and jump back in unless your goal is endurance. If your goal is endurance and stamina, then you can do that. In which case, I would say don't lift weights, go do uh, you know sprints or cardio to do that. Well, it's very similar to like uh, sets and reps, right? Where there's, I think there's two ends of the spectrum. So if we look at rest periods, I would say. 30 second rest is on the low end of the spectrum. Three minute rest is on the high end of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. Anything below that or above that, and you start you start to lose some of the benefits of yeah. resistance training. So first of all, those are the parameters that I would stay within. I would, uh, and the further you are on the spectrum, the the least amount of time I would spend training that way. In other words, uh, I would I wouldn't always train uh, 30 second rest periods because then you're going to get close. You're going to get more adaptation towards the endurance side, like mm -hmm. Sal was saying. Mm -hmm. I don't want to uh, rest more than three minutes all the time because then I'm getting less benefits from the resistance training. So I want to manipulate my rest periods within that kind of window. And the same rules apply to that we talk about with reps is if you've been training in the 15 rep range for weeks on weeks or months on months, one of the best things you could do is move out of that rep range to send a new signal to the body to adapt and change because it's different. The same thing goes for rest periods. If you've been you know, hanging around the one minute rest periods and you're consistent with that and you've been doing that for weeks on weeks, one of the best things you do is move to three minutes. Mm. And if you're like, you lift like kind of like a strength athlete, power athlete, then you are probably already resting a long time, three minutes or more maybe. Then the, one of the best things you could do is move down to the 30 second to one minute and you're going to see results from that. Yeah, I w it's interesting because I, I spent uh, some time in this gym. There was this guy that was a gymnast who was always like doing ring work and because it's so physically demanding, your entire body is just like on fire the whole, the whole time. Everything's tensed up. Uh, it, it requires so much exertion that uh, his rest periods were, were really long. Uh, yeah. in between and I'd and I'd ask him about that but it really to be able to even perform a lot of these these movements and things with that type of demand and intensity uh, he had to string out his rest periods at like a, a really uh, you know a, an excessive amount of time more than than normal which I mean it made sense but it's all like very specific to how you're training he was training technique he was trying to get his technique perfect and fatigue screws that up I'll That's tell it. you I'll tell you where people mess up the most with rest is when they train for power when I see people do jump boxes or plyometric throws or whatever in gyms, yeah, in short they, rest periods. They totally screw up the no rest. Sense. They treat it like cardio. So it's like, you know, one to another to another, get tired as possible. You're not getting any power uh, yeah. benefit out of that. Well, you could just do that. I mean, you could just jump in place. Exactly. And then, yeah. And like save yourself all the knee uh, gouging. Exactly. So if you're going to train for power, Long rest periods. You know, you're resting until you feel like you're fresh, and then you do it again, and that's how you improve your explosive ability. One of the best advices, though, re regarding this is actually just telling somebody to start tracking. Right, like a lot of I, very few people I know time their rest periods. Uh, most people go by feel. Yeah, you know, they they do this, they do a set, and then they go, oh, okay, I feel like I'm ready for the next one. And one of the coolest things that you can do to change up your routine without even messing with any exercises, sets, or anything is literally just track the time and see what you consistently rest for, and then manipulate that. Mm -hmm. So, and yeah, because depending on the person, they're going to rest somewhere, like I said, somewhere between that 30 second and three minute mark. And I normally like to go the opposite end of whatever spectrum or whatever side of the spectrum I lean on. So if I'm a long rester and I'm resting at least 
a minute and a half to three minutes. Then I like cutting that way down to three, 30 seconds to a minute to shock my body the most. And if I'm somebody who's on the other side where I love to do circuit training, I get bored resting in between sets. I feel like I can always do more. If I'm always leaning towards that, I'm going to push that person towards the three minute mark. Mm. 